So this week, my main objective was just to do windows. And that's all I focused on all week long was trimming these windows out. My goal was to get to this one and get it finished out. And as you can see, I'm not quite there. So as you enjoy what I've done this whole week, I'm gonna try to get this wrapped up before it's time to close this video. <laughs> yeah, and you'll see why I'm laughing, trust me. So my lawn chairs here were set up, oh, good morning. <laughs> we're set up because, well, this is the week of the Saranac Lake Winter Carnival. And my wife and my daughter and I came here Saturday night and watched the fireworks from here, which is pretty awesome. What is that in? trimming out a window. I don't know what the first really is. I, just, I do all kinds of things. You know, I foam the windows in and clean that all out and I scrape all the mud off. Once you get past all those things and you're getting ready to actually start trimming the window, the way I approach it is that I need to know the jam extension. This piece here between the edge of the finished window and the sheetrock. And you want, you want it so it's nice and tight in here and in here and behind here, where you guys can see it here, right? So I have a very simple method of doing that. Now here's a little quirk of the Anderson 200 series window. The jam here tends to be a little bit on the loose side and so it kind of pushes out a little bit after install and it leaves a little bit of a lip. So don't measure it at that lip. You want to measure it against this bottom piece here. So you take your combi, right? Or combination square. 
you want to set it flush against the sheetrock. Now I'm paying attention to the blade of the combi or the, the rest of the combi running against the sheetrock and I want to see if there's any gaps here. And that'll tell me if I've missed something right here on this leading edge. Now you can take a, a rasp, which is what I typically use. Like I haven't even prepped this window yet. Just got the measurements for it. But anyway, um, I'll hit this with a... Why don't I just find that? Well, that's going to be upstairs. Nope, it's right there. I was... Take your combi, rest it nice and flat against the sheetrock, slide the blade in so it just comes in contact, and then read it. So you go around and you measure all four of your corners, and I always write it on the, the outside of the window of its location. And that comes important because later on, I go through I grab all the individual windows with all of their measurements. And then that way I can just sit down here and just do mass production of components. There, there's your how-to for today. Well, all the windows are trimmed out in all the bedrooms. Yep. Well, that's pretty exciting. All right, so the next production window will be the small double bunk. Then we have the one-off windows. So let's go, let's go do one of those. Well, good morning. Oh, right, last night, uh, my wife and daughter showed up and we went down and checked out the Ice Palace. That was kind of cool. Pun not intended, but still good. <laughs> okay. I'm in the video. This right here is so good, honey. What? A slippery ice chair, go figure. That is a lion. One's laying down, one's standing up. Our bed right here. Our bed, this is where we're spending the night? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wouldn't be the coldest thing I've ever done. Hey, yeah. Can you listen down to the here? Can you take a picture with your camera? Sorry, the filming of that wasn't great. I tried something, obviously it didn't work that well. But you get the point, right? This massive ice structure right at the bottom of the street. I mean, you can you walk out the front door and you can see it. It's, it's a really cool feature that this house has, I think. It's the accessibility to everything around here. Anywho, I don't need to sell you on the house. <laughs> uh, right, we're making components for all of the smaller double home windows. I have most of the sills pretty well prepped. See, I missed a spot here I need to get and then cut the bottom one. And then, again, jam extensions and all of that. So, my, res my, uh, what's the word for, uh, 
based on your response to my question last week about doing how-to stuff, it, it's a bit mixed, and but it does seem like you guys do enjoy some of the how-to stuff. So maybe what I'll try is a, I don't know, a mixed bag. And just keep talking to me, keep telling me what you guys like. Without you, this doesn't work. And the more enjoyable it is for you guys in the general, um, then maybe YouTube will start pushing this thing out more. As I'm in production mode, I failed to notice that there was a knot in the end of this board. And I put a screw in it, and sure enough, she just cracked right through. So, gonna have to remake this part. because they have some sort of ice formation above a door that they need to knock down. And I'd say I'd swing by and knock it down for them. Yeah. I gotta stop doing this stuff. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the morning. Well, last night was interesting. <laughs> I get there. And it ended up not actually being an ice problem at all. It was just a large amount of snow on that roof. And that roof was metal. <laughs> and why someone would have a metal roof in this area? To the entranceway of whatever. Doesn't matter if it's a building or a home, whatever. And not have snow breaks on that metal roof? That's beyond me. So just when I thought I could put the music back on, I have something to show you. So I cut this headpiece here, or no, this is a casing jam, to its tapered rip, and when I cut through this knot, I ended up with three little chunks that popped out. Now, this tells me that that knot is not fully bonded to the wood around it. And over time, what can happen is that knot can loosen up and fall out. Oh, look at that. <laughs> uh, it'll fail sooner than I thought. So Pete and Brad just dropped by to pick up their ladder and planks. And uh, they brought me a new toy. It's Christmas and Frankie! Look at this guy! This thing is massive! That's sick! Way heavier, way sturdier, and way taller than my good old trusty here. <laughs> I have been using this tripod during this entire project. And 
It has served me well, but a couple of things. One, two of the legs are bent, so the legs tend to jam up on me, and the pedestal flange thing, if you will, is all busted out in here, and so my adapter for the GoPro camera kept falling off and untwisting, and it's been a hot mess. But still, I pushed forward, because technically it still worked. <laughs> I just couldn't use it in certain positions. And uh, yeah, so that one at max height versus this guy at max height, I mean, that, that alone isn't enough. So I've had to use the ladders in the past to put the camera on and yada, yada, yada. Anyway, this isn't a you know tripod tutorial or whatever. I just have a new toy and I'm super excited. So I thought I'd share. Oh, and I've had this since I was 12, 13, somewhere in there. And I'm now 44. Am I 44 now? Uh, 45, I am. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so I've had this for 30 years. Holy cannoli. If I can figure out a way to fix this, because this is going home and getting shoved in the pit of despair, otherwise known as my garage. Mm. Now I would say the trickiest bit of the insulation on this is to figure out how to get your length of your sill. So, the way you do it is you go to your inside dimension of your window. You add 3 16 add 3 16 there's 3 eighths. You do that again on this side. 3 eighths and 3 eighths is 3 quarter. Then, you have your width of your casing on both sides. In this case, we're doing 3 and a half inch, so that's an additional 7 inches. Plus, you have the horn. The horn is this bit here that protrudes past the casing. I do three quarters of an inch. Basically, whatever I, the thickness of my material, my casing is, is what I use as my blanket dimension. Some houses, you know, they spec in a bigger horn or shorter horn. 45 and 5 16 plus three quarter. That would be 46 and 1 16 plus seven, that's 46, that's 53 and 1 16th, plus an inch and a half, that's 54 and 9 16ths, 54, 9 16ths, that is our length of sill. Yeah, I've really let this one go to last, just because of it being a bay window, and how close the windows are together, and the fact that there's a difference in dimension between this window and this window. So it's going to make making the window sill and the, the casing material for here is going to be difficult. And another thing to keep track of is that this seam isn't perfectly plumb or par parallel for that matter to either of the windows. It kind of does this archy number here. So, I'm going to have to reach deep into my bag of tricks on how to overcome that. Good morning. I have one last thing I need to do before we start cutting all these bits and bobs. And that is to verify if the bottom of the windows are all in the same plane. from side to side. I think it's still doable. Now we can make a whole lot of parts and pieces and bits and bobs.
have an opportunity to trim out a window that's like this is actually a bit of a treat only because it really makes you think. And here's the main obstacle you have to deal with. This is not a bay window that you purchased today. Today you buy one that's pre-assembled and you just bolt it to the wall, essentially. And this guy here is three individual windows that are completely framed differently and they were framed 130 years ago. All I did was open up the original opening and try to fill it as much as possible. And yeah, apparently I didn't do a good enough job when I was thinking about the sills coming across because we have, we have a difference. And in order to make sure that your sills come all the way across, and are nice and smooth at each of their transitions. And there's no gaps. The taper runs this way. So then each one of these joints, not only do they have a miter in them, but they also have a bevel in them. And you can't batch cut any of this. Every single piece is very particular to its individual window. Once I made that cut, <laughs> it started pulling. So now this board is now bowed. Not only do you have the angled bevel, but the angled bevel is cut on a taper. <laughs> uh, I mean, I do enjoy a good challenge. And old Frankie here, she has been a provider. Well, I guess you're just going to have to wait until next week to find out how she turns out. <laughs> and with that, thank you for stopping by High Peaks Home.